do come here often? <laughs> Sorry, that was like the creepiest way to start this off. <laughs> off on a bed, but let's start over. All right. Hi. Hi. That was very moving. It's a bit hard to talk after that. The response and the reaction to what you guys do and your TED talk and tonight, it is extraordinary. You have to experience it. Um, tonight was incredibly moving. There was rebellion, revolution, bravery, love, tenderness, joy, heartbreak. Do you want a job as a publicist? It's all right. <laughs> okay. I'm very good. <laughs> um, I suppose that's pretty unusual to experience in a group environment. And you are rock star poets because the reaction to your work has been extraordinary. How do you explain it? Um, well, we definitely don't take it for granted. I think that we are incredibly lucky that a room full of people will take time out of their lives to come and listen to us. Um, that, on a very basic level, is something that I'm very thankful for on a daily basis. Um, in terms of the response, I am not surprised by people's being moved by the art form because I grew up being moved by the art form. I was surrounded by incredible poets and would have the wind knocked out of me on a weekly basis and would go home stunned um, and experiencing joy and terror and sadness and all of that. Um, so I know that, I know that feeling because I've had it from other rock star poets who I would really call rock star poets. Um, you know, I don't think that what we're doing is anything more remarkable than what a lot of other poets are doing. I think that we have been very, very blessed and very fortunate to be given the opportunity to go perhaps farther away from home um, than a lot of other poets get the chance to do. Um, so I think more than anything, uh, I'm, I'm really glad that people are discovering the magic of spoken word poetry. And if you're discovering it through us, then that's a great gift you've given us. But we hope we're the gateway drug and you go and find other poets to follow as well because we are just two people in a very big ocean of, of poets. I suppose that the deeper point is that text messages, bad language, like shortening, everything's shorter, quicker, faster. And, some, and I believe in what you do in a really deep way and the experience tonight was incredibly meaningful. Why poetry? Like it just seems like we're in a time that poetry wouldn't have any significance. It wouldn't mean anything to people. No one would get it. So. I don't have the magic answer. My, my, my best guess is, is that is in part why, why we're so lucky to get this reaction is because, you know, for one reason or another, we're, we're in a world where everything is short and everything is through a screen. Um, so to be in a room with someone sharing something, um, I think is always a powerful thing. I think still blows me away. You know, sometimes it's my sister or my father um, or Sarah, you know. Um, and so I think for us, it was really just this idea of, of bringing that into a little more formalized place um, and making that a little more sacred, hopefully, um, as an art form. Um, and, and we've been very lucky that, that people so far are so good. Um, I suppose that you were talking about your influence and the fact that you had that instinct that you were inspired really young, so you figured there'd be a whole lot of other people that would respond to the vulnerability and the and the openness of poetry, like you did. Um, when, both of you, the question is asked, when did you find your voice? <sighs> um, yeah, right. Well, the, the relatively short answer is I first saw spoken word poetry for the first time. I was 17 years old. Um, I saw it uh, at, in a big theater. It was actually a big talent show of other kids my age, and I saw it for the first time, and it was just like, that's. That's it, that's awesome. Um, and it was a pretty s simple realization. I really just went home and started writing. Um, and that's what it was. And, and Sarah and I joke around, you know, Sarah, I'm sure she'll talk to it, but had a lot more poetry to go to in, in New York. You know, I grew up in Orange County where all good art goes to die. <laughs> and um, so it was a lot more kind of incubated, in, which in some way was nice. In some ways was, was even more important to my 
finding of that voice? Um, in terms of the voice finding, I think I'm I'm still doing it. You know, I'm we're 23. You're 24. I'm 23. Whatever. <laughs> we're like we're like the best looking 65 year olds you've yeah, ever baby. seen. Yeah, <laughs> um, baby. No, um, I at least I won't speak for Felt. For me, I feel very young, and I feel like I have a lot of learning and growing to do. Um, I did grow up around a lot of influences, and those influences leak in when I'm not expecting them, and I'll say something, and I'll go, that's not my voice at all. That's somebody else's voice. And then I'll have to go find which poet it is I'm ripping off, and I have to Anyone go. Anyone we should know about? Yeah, right? Um, not off the top of my head. Um, but, it, but it happens often, and that, that's the difference, is that Phil grew up around you know, n no other big influences, so he found it found his voice very early, I think. I grew up around so many influences that I was able to go, okay, this works, this works, I can't do that, I don't understand that, that work, you know, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, it would be a different journey trying not to imitate. In totally, that. yeah, totally. Um, and I'm still figuring that out. Also, it would be weird if I had the same voice when I was 15 as I did when I was 23. That would be concerning. Um, so <laughs> my voice is changing on a daily basis, and well, that's one of the reasons why I love Writing spoken word poetry is because I try to write from where I am right now, so that later on, when I go back and look at that poem, it's almost like a photograph. Mm -hmm.